So what the government did is recognize the, the benefit that these types of contracts can have and essentially had, have allowed you to defer that income start date up to 85 so that if in fact you can apply a portion of uh, the client's assets into a qualified DIA and if they're able, you can essentially achieve a similar benefit at 85 at, at, at a little bit more than $49,000 per year for that $100,000 original investment. So really that's the essence of, of the ruling that we see there. And so again, we're not really just talking about a QLAC, you're really talking about overall deferred income annuities and the ability to provide greater access and flexibility on a qualified basis. So what are the rules around QLAC? Um, the government and the IRS still are going to want um, uh, the return off of this stuff. So um, recognizing the opportunity, uh, at least initially, they have provided some caps around the amount of money that you can put into these contracts uh, at uh, either 25% of all the qualified assets of, of, that the uh, investor would hold or a cap of $125,000 um, total either into a single contract or a number of contracts that, that they may have available to purchase. Um, this cap applies separately for each of the spouses, so you could apply this uh, 125 um, to both individuals in, in that arrangement. And as I mentioned before, uh, the income has to start at any time before 85 or at age 85. Um, one thing I did gloss over in my annuity map a few pages ago are Yes, there are income annuities that are uh, variable income annuities. Uh, index income annuities have not been introduced as of this point, but technically you could buy a, uh, an immediate variable income annuity. However, there are essentially not even, uh, very few have been used over the years. And uh, from a financial planning perspective, when you're looking to lock in a floor or some form of guarantee, especially for the long term of a, of a retirement income plan, it's difficult to um, uh, count on a, a variable payment to cover, let's say, the mortgage and utilities, especially if you're applying some type of flooring concept. So that they don't tend to be used as much anyway. But uh, for QLAC, the, the government had actually specified that this would only apply for fixed payout annuities. But even for income annuities that are fixed in nature today, there are options of which you can have cost of living adjustments, typically around 2 or 3% increase per year off the payment. And there are a few that are offered um, on a, on a um, CPI basis. But those represent probably only about 5% of overall uh, income annuities contracts purchased today anyway. And generally, uh, advisors, most advisors are applying um, fixed payouts. But there are some great opportunities to apply the call adjustments, which I think Curtis will also be covering in a few minutes. Um, finally, the annuity cannot be liquidated. Um, there are, for the most part, a majority of income annuities available today and even in, in deferred income annuities do provide uh, some form of way, if you were to change your mind, you can go back to the insurance company, they can commute that contract and, and give some money back to you. Um, uh, but in the case of extending this longevity out, so for a long period of time, uh, the, the government has put a restriction on that for the purpose of, of these types of contracts. But as I mentioned, they're okay with the death benefit to the estate in the event that uh, the obligation is still paid out to the heirs. Uh, 